Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live and tonight with us we have Kaylee Cohen, the star of Frank and Penelope premiering tomorrow in theaters across the United States. Kaylee, first of all, congratulations on the movie. Today, tomorrow's the big day. It hits the big silver screen. How are you feeling? I'm really excited. I'm excited that I get to share this movie with an audience and I'm really excited that it's going to uh, theaters. And I, I wish I would have seen it in theaters. I still probably am going to. I've seen it twice already. But I got to ask you this, you know, you've been, you're fairly new to the acting scene. And this role is sort of going to be like your big breakout role. When you officially booked it uh, and you read the script, did you think that, you know, this might be the role that I've been looking for so far in my career? Well, I've always loved true romance, and I think I could glean from the script that it had a sort of true romance road trip element to it. Um, I fell in love with the writing first and Sean's voice, and um, I thought there was a lot that I could bring to the table with this role. But I didn't really necessarily think that it would be my big breakout role. Well, let me tell you what, you were absolutely amazing in this film. I mean, me and Sean talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, less than two weeks ago. And, you know, you and Billy did a great job uh, in the film, but it's Penelope. It's Penelope who is the driving force of the film and the power that she possesses that we get to see throughout the whole film. As you were reading the script and you saw the kind of performance that it was going to entail from you, did it make you feel nervous? Were you confident that when shooting began, you were ready to bring everything you had to the table? I was pretty confident. I was also had talked to Sean and I think that he had a really strong and clear vision for this project. And anytime I would ask him a question, he always had an answer. He always had a reasoning for why something was in the script. And that made me feel confident and comfortable as an actor because I like to know why things are happening. Yeah. And um, building a backstory for my character uh, was one of the first things I started with. And um, I think that she's the kind of character that uses her sexuality in order to navigate the world and she uses it as a sort of survival, mm -hmm. a means of survival. And I think she understands how much power is in it, but it is almost to her detriment, um, you know, because it's, uh, I think something that, at least I think that it's something that from a young age was something that she possessed and and was looking for true love this whole time. And we're gonna get to her survival instincts in a second. Uh, we heard from Sean how you got the role, uh, sort of like he got all these audition tapes and then somebody said, you know, come check out this girl. And he immediately saw you as Penelope. Uh, is that how you remember it? Did you have to do any extra lobbying with Sean to nail down the role of Penelope? I auditioned for the role. It came through my agents and... Uh, Tiu is the casting director and she reached out directly and I auditioned three times for it though. So I definitely had to put in the work for the role. Now, there are several stories told in this film. You have the love story of Frank and Penelope, their pasts before they meet that night. Uh, then you have the threat aspect in act two into act three. Uh, you know, and all the challenges that you guys face and are going to continue to face when the movie is over. Uh, Sean did a great job, in my opinion, putting it all together and, you know, making it into one cohesive story. What was it like working with Sean behind the camera as he was directing this narrative? It was a lot of fun to work with Sean. He is such a poetic person and so thoughtful. And um, he's an actor. So I think for me, working with him was like, he, um, he understood what the process was like for an actor. And so he could communicate in ways that made sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, and he also 
had this um, grit and determination on set that was, you know, we were in really tough conditions filming this movie, um, you know, extreme heat and in a ghost town. And um, he had a sort of leadership that just really, you know, captained the ship. The story does not work unless the audience feels the chemistry between uh, your character, Penelope, and Billy's character, Frank. And we do. Uh, it is just, I mean, you can't help but as the audience fall in love with the couple. Uh, was there, was it challenging to create that chemistry to bring to the audience? Did you and Billy have talks? Did you have talks with Sean? How did it all come about? Well, Billy's a great actor, so it was a lot of fun to get to work with him because every day he showed up and he gave it 100%. And we also, because of the circumstances that we were living in, you know, we were all going through this together and living really close. You know, we lived in the same building and had to, you know, become friends with everybody. Mm -hmm. And and um, I think that definitely helped us create this um, chemistry when we were working on set. You can't help but compare the both of you, you to Marilyn Monroe and Billy to James Dean and the vibe that you guys put out there. And Sean confirmed this, that that's what he was going for. How do you feel about that aspect of the film? You know, the whole Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, the two characters coming together, falling in love. What are your thoughts on that? I think it was a great casting choice on TU's part. Uh, I think that this film is intentionally a genre building. It's like genre um, bending and it has these tropes, but then it goes and it breaks those tropes. You know, it it shows us like, okay, here is someone who could be um, a dumb blonde character or a James Dean or a Marilyn Monroe. And then it kind of, at the end of the film, it takes down that facade and says, um, you know, after like, a long time of fighting and finding who that person really is through the script. I, you know, she, she's one of those people that um, is like faking tears and faking yeah. sort of like she has a, an act going on. And I think that he's able to break down that act and show uh, the real side of her. Like I said, you guys really nailed that whole 50s, 60s vibe. Uh, did Sean ask you or did you do it on your own? Like watch any of those old films on how the love romance was built up on the screen and the way they talk to each other to give it a more authentic feel? So I had seen True Romance, so I was kind of bringing some of those elements to the table, but I had never seen Thelma and Louise before. So I watched that. I watched um, Natural Born Killers. I watched, um, there was another movie that I that I watched that I hadn't seen that added to that character. I, he gave me a list of movies that I, I, he thought I should watch. I got to tell you, before I watched the movie, because you mentioned Natural Born Killers, and I just read the synopsis, I thought this was going to be sort of like a Bonnie and Clyde Natural Born Killers, where the two of you meet and you guys go on this horrendous murder spree. That's not what this movie's about. It's 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 not. It's the complete opposite. But it's funny that you mentioned it because that's exactly what I thought about. Now, you said this as well. Penelope is a survivor. She's smart. She knows what her talents are, how to use them to survive in life. Uh, but all we really know about Penelope's backstory is that she works at a strip club. We really don't know anything about her beyond that so far. Uh, so you said that you developed a backstory to bring Penelope. You want to? Sh do you feel like sharing what her backstory looked like to you? Yeah, of course. I did a lot of research for this film. Not only did I watch movies, I also um, wrote down what her backstory was I, in great length. And uh, whenever she would say something that I was like, well, that seems weird, why would she say that? I would ask Sean. And then um, for me, the backstory of Penelope is something along the lines of at an early age, something happened to her where I think she, her sexuality was used against her. And then as a way of having power back, she overcompensates and she understands like the power of it. 
and then finds herself in this like really bad end of the road circumstance in her own way. You know, for Frank, he is a blue collar worker who, who um, he, you know, he ultimately sees his wife cheating on him and then ends up at the strip club. But for her, I feel like that was something that society kind of put her into. I think that she found herself there and and was having a hard time getting out of those circumstances and out of the the person that she made herself out to be, which is Penelope. She doesn't even identify as Penelope because mm-hmm. it's like, I think so far removed from who she actually feels like is herself. And then when she meets Frank, she does fall in love with him, but I think she is scared to let herself be in love with him because that's not, you know, all of her survival instincts have told her to do the opposite, you know, that, that it's not safe to be in love with someone that they're not going to have her back, that she's going to go on this road trip and he's going to leave her. That's what she thinks. And so when she lets down her wall and she gives him like her, him, his, her word, and she trusts him, this newfound power, she finds a new power in, in love, like in true love that, you know, she's not alone in the world and she can be loyal and she can become a new person. And at the end of the movie, I think that we see this complete, like, um, you know, she's all dolled up at the beginning and she's putting on an act. And at the end of the movie, she's just kind of like, oh, like, you know, none of that, she doesn't have any of those tricks anymore. Yeah, and it's great how it's captured in the end of the film as you sort of lean your head on Billy's shoulder, like, and you have this happy smile on your face. Like, you finally, Penelope finally found the happiness that she thought she did not deserve. So, with that said, do you think Penelope had, before she met Frank, had a very low self esteem of herself? I wouldn't say she had a a low self-esteem of herself. I think she just, I think that the way that she navigated the world was, um, you know, sort of immoral. And that's how she found herself, you know, in this uh, like sin eater cult place where, where she was like, um, those tricks weren't going to work on Chisos. And they, they worked on um, Cookie, you know, Charlie's character, but they, I don't think that they worked uh, they don't work on Frank. Like, yeah. I mean, they do to an extent, but he can kind of like, she does, she feels bad because she loves him. So I think, um, yeah, I don't think she has a low self-esteem. I just think that she wanted out of that. Mm-hmm. And this was her out. Throughout the film, you say several times rage in regards to a man really loving a woman. Uh, to me, that I took that as, Penelope grew up believing in fairy tales and like a prince charming. And when a man is really in love with a woman, the rage that comes out is how she knows that it's true love. Do you agree or disagree with that? I think that's true for the character Penelope. I personally am a pacifist. I don't believe in violence. I don't think that's the answer. I think there are other ways to solve our problems. I don't think that rage is equivalent to love. But Penelope, I think, probably has seen that, that if someone cares about her, he'll he'll be violent, you know? I think that that's how she understands it. And when I was talking to Sean, you know, he, um, you know, gave me some examples to help me understand how, you know, why those lines are important because, you know, Frank wouldn't go into, he wouldn't get mad or beat someone up if, if it was his other, like mm-hmm. his wife, you know, before Penelope, but he cares so much about Penelope. He wants to protect her and that comes out as rage. And yeah. so I think for her growing up, that's probably what she thought was love. That makes total sense. The way you explain it like that. Uh, do you think Penelope is someone who her entire life has been completely underestimated as to what she's capable of. Not bad things, but how smart she is. Oh, for sure. I mean, Penelope strikes me when I read the script as a as a person who she didn't have a formal education. Mm-hmm. You know, she. I think she is street smart. Yeah. I think she uh, figured out how the world works very early on, and then she um you know you and and she's smart and she knows how people people work you know she knows how to manipulate a situation um and get out of a situation and who's safe and who's not safe 
you know, she knows that Chisos is not a safe person. Mm-hmm. And, and Frank doesn't understand that, you know, like when they stop him on the road, he's more likely to help. And yeah. she's like, she understands that, you know, that that guy's not safe and she shouldn't talk to him. Or she should just get out of there. She approaches everybody with a little bit of, at least a little bit of skepticism. Like, no, you want my trust? It needs to be earned. And Penelope's trust is not, you know, given away very easily because of the damage that, you know, you've explained. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is uh, when all of you guys are in the room and you're talking with uh, Chisos. And Jonathan was amazing as Chisos uh, in the role. Uh, And you guys are are talking. And here you have two scam artists, okay? Uh, Characters, Penelope and Chisos. And Penelope gets the upper hand over him. She fools him. She beats him at his own game in a way. Uh, Do you think that's a testament to how convincing Penelope is? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think that demonstrates how smart she really is for, I think she's playing dumb as a defense mechanism in these situations with men. And I think that with uh, characters like Donna's character, Mabel, I think that Chisos thought that she would become the next Mabel, essentially, you know, in his kind of like cult. And that's not what happened because she, I think she had so much worldly understanding already that she was able to like trick him into thinking that she was, he thought she was one way. He thought she cared about money or what his, you know, uh, what she could get out of him and that she would, you know, ultimately go with him and sleep with him Mm -hmm. and leave Frank. But um, I think that really Penelope is someone who loves and want and has um, loyalty. She's I think she's a loyal person deep down so that it's she didn't fall for it. And she's also really smart. She she wanted to get out of there. And Frank was kind of like, no, it's safe. He didn't he didn't understand the danger that they were in. Yeah, I think she did. That's exactly right. She saw really just saw Penelope saw that she was a stripper and he that's all he needed to know and he just sort of labeled her as this one-dimensional person who you know makes money stripping and really has no smarts and that's where he failed that's where he completely underestimated her uh do you think by the end of the movie penelope's days as a scam artist are done i think so yeah I think that we get the sense from Penelope early in the film that she's tired of the life that she's living and that she wants an out. And that is why she goes on the road trip with Frank. Frank makes that Thelma and Louise um, reference because he wants to end his life. And And he's at the end of his road too. And she... I mean, that's why they get together and they, and why they find um, why this bond happens between Frank and Penelope, because they're like fending for their lives. And and now all of a sudden they have a reason to live, which is love, you know? What do you, yeah. uh, What do you think, you know, when Penelope and Frank realize what's going on at that motel and see the full magnitude, um, you know, Penelope she comes under a serious threat, uh, but she plays it cool. And that's where her street smarts really come up again. Uh, Is that just, again, her just being really smart, assessing whatever situation she is in, adapting to it to benefit herself and and save her life in this case? Yeah, I don't think she wants to go back to her old ways, but she does at the end of the movie with Charlie's character, Charlie Coons, who plays Cookie. She does it with him, not because she wants to, but because that's the way that she knows just how to survive. In this circumstance, she is actually doing it to save her life. And I think that's kind of, um, you know, an example of, of how, you know, she's been on a pole, right? Yeah. And and have these tactics, you know, like moving the table over and giving him a lap dance and, and showing her body to him and, and seducing him. And now she's behind bars and she has to get out of the pole. She has to get out from the poles and she has to seduce him and, and, and somehow trick him 
into setting her free. That's the only way she knows how. It's the it's only, yeah. Uh, so with the movie coming out tomorrow and being released to wide audiences across the country and so on, uh, are there any uh, fears that you have about Penelope, you know, being misinterpreted by some viewers? I know this is kind of a vague, general, sort of stupid question, but I got to ask you, because Penelope is so multi-layered and is a really a complicated character... Uh, do you really hope and pray that when people watch this and they see her, that they understand her right away? Or is it better if they walk away from the film really thinking about the character and how multi-layered she really is? Well, I guess they just, I guess I hope that they walk away from this movie and it raises some questions. You know, I I think it's fine if they they don't agree with her with her way of being. You know, I and it's okay if they if they judge her, but I think I hope that it gives them a little bit of empathy, you know, for people in those situations, for people who have had to use their sexuality to survive or yeah. ha- have done that and that they can become new people and that I hope that they can have some empathy for for her and and root for her, but um, you know she she isn't a perfect person, and not a lot of people. No one is a perfect person, actually. No, no, no one is. Far so, from it. Um, and she's very vulnerable. This character, you know, lets her guard down, and and I hope that they can just uh, have fun watching the movie. You know, it's it's not supposed to take itself too seriously. You know, it's she. I, I played a trope character, which is kind of like, well, the fun of it. You know, yeah. it's a fun horror movie that it should just be entertaining, but also raise some questions for people to, you know, have a little more empathy for other people. I've asked this question before to other actors and each project is near and dear and special to them in different ways. Where does Frank and Penelope sit with you so far in your career? Well, all the people I made the film with are very close to my heart now. And um, it was a very special time for me because I feel like I could understand Penelope and I brought a lot of myself to her. And there's also aspects of her that uh, are not like me, but that, you know, by getting to know her more, I think, and, and turning up those qualities of myself, it's kind of helped me to grow as a person. So I think it's always going to be a very special film to me. And of course, all the people I made the film with um, are very close to my heart. You were, fan- I mean, I can't say this enough. You were fantastic as Penelope. Uh you brought the character to life, the different layers, the compli- the she's not a simple character and you just, you nailed it. You and Billy together, the whole cast, you guys did a great job. Sean did an amazing job. Sh- Sean has a cameo in the, not a cameo, it's a lot longer than a cameo. He's in the beginning of the film and the end. So it's great to see Sean on the screen as well. Uh, before we go, you have several projects that are in, in post-production. Uh, I personally think that Frank and Penelope is going to be a big stepping milestone for you in your career, and it's going to lead to much bigger things as you go along. And as far as the projects that are coming down the pipeline beyond Frank and Penelope, um, I know there's Prom Night coming out. That's not a remake of the 1980s Prom Night, is it? No, that's not. That's um, a project that has been in development since um, been about a year. Um, and I really liked the script and um, it hasn't been shot yet. So, oh, okay. Um, but the other project that I just finished that was also in Cannes that I went to go promote was um, Spinning Gold, which, right. which is uh, another project that uh, I've known about for a very long time and is close to my heart. And uh, I can't wait for people to see that one. It'll be in theaters soon. And uh, it has a really great cast and it's set in the seventies and everyone is really talented and can sing and, um, and dance. And it's a, it's a really fun movie. And I think everyone's going to like it. Sounds awesome. Kaylee, I want to thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your experience uh, with Frank and Penelope. 
Guys, again, the movie's coming out across the United States tomorrow in theaters. Check with your local listings to see where you can see it. It's a must-watch recommendation. This, like Kaylee said, this movie, you cannot fit it into a, a particular genre box. It crosses over many different genres. Uh, romance, horror, thriller, action, you name it. It has a little bit of everything. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go, Kaylee? Hmm. Maybe just that I've heard, um, I know that this film draws on a lot of references to other films mm -hmm. and, um, and that's Sean's intention. Yeah. And it also draws on things like uh, musical references like when he wrote the script there's a whole soundtrack that mm -hmm. he wrote it to um, a bunch of new songs that I discovered but also it has a um, you know it makes references to poems and it makes reference there's so many easter eggs in this movie yeah. it makes references to um to even the odyssey at some point you know like if you if you've read the odyssey you can connect to make connections between Penelope and and um Homer's you know that yeah. and you can also make um connections with you know um there is a story about the girl with the dancing red shoes and the wizard of oz and the symbolism between but behind the silver uh, the red sparkly shoes yeah so there was a lot of thought and easter eggs that are in this movie and i hope that people who really love this movie we will soon find those out and um just love it even more because of all the details that were in it well the reason i watched it twice is because when i had sean on he referenced the sheriff's card and i didn't pick up on that so i had to watch it again and see what he was talking about we're not going to spoil anything but it's very cool he did put all these really cool easter eggs throughout the whole film again i want to thank our guest kaylee cohen for being for being here with us tonight the movie again it's called Frank and Penelope, coming out tomorrow. Don't miss it. you got to check it out. I want to thank all our audience who tuned in live and those of you who will watch this later on. On behalf of Kaylee and myself, stay safe and stay walking. Good night, everybody. Good night.